Hey everybody, Greg Rice here in the Bucket, yeah. Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and uh, no, 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 that's the word of the day, no, N-O, and the most successful people get used to and get comfortable dealing with that word, and the good old friend of mine, his name is Adam. Back in the day, he always had a phrase. He said, Greg, I love when people tell me no, because every no that I get is one person, one step closer to the word yes. And I never looked at it too, you know, too much in depth back then. This was high school and um, it didn't make much sense. But today, now 31 years old, it makes a lot of sense. And he was looking at it in a different capacity, <clears throat> dating. <clears throat> so that was his mindset, is he didn't mind sticking his neck out there. He didn't mind being embarrassed. He didn't mind having egg on his face. And I admire him for that. And that's something, a principle, that you can embody and take with you, wherever you are, whatever line of work you are, whatever goal that you have in mind, getting comfortable with, Adversity, diversity, disappointment, disapproval, all of these things that can really weigh you down. So looking at it a little bit deeper now, society in general has been programmed to be instant gratification, instant approval. The customer is always right. The worker is always wrong. We are sorry for the inconvenience. It won't happen again. You know, constant appeasement, constant pleasing to the consumer. You know, what's the result of that? Is that everybody is entitled. Everybody is expecting, okay? Nobody wants to work anymore. Everybody feels that they're owed and they deserve this treatment and that status. But frankly, it's not sustainable. It's not fair. And it's just not ethical and logical. It's not efficient either. So if you look at the base of society, everybody could be told yes for, you know, going out to dinner, buying a car, going to the gym, signing up for a service. The surface level things, sure, you know, you can operate in that fictitious world. But once you get above that, once you start making real decisions, right, like buying a property, starting a family, relocating your life, changing your career, medical and health decisions, all of that, poof, it's gone. The yes, 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 no problem, no problem, that stuff is gone. And you need to get comfortable with hearing that. And the reason why is then you can pivot. You can pivot effectively. You can take what you've learned, leverage it to your next step. Okay, for example, with this church project you've heard about, I can't tell you how many lenders have said to me, oh, we're, there's too many unknowns. Um, we don't know what kind of can of worms it is. This is your first time doing it. Uh, this is a depressed area. We don't think you can get these rents. You know, blah, 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 blah. Beat it. Every time I hear no, my response is what? No problem. No, Mr. Rice, we can't do that for you. No problem. Have a nice day. Ding. All set. No problem. Okay, I don't get mad. I don't have to get even. I don't have to wallow in my sorrows because I heard what I didn't want to hear. I take that. I recalibrate, re-engineer it and go forward in another direction. The only roadblock to me is death. That's it. When I die, that's it. There's no, that's it, plain and simple. But you can think about everything else up to your death as an option, as an alternative, as a different way to go about something. So a lot of people get stuck and hung up they get hung up on that word no, and they let it defeat them. So you take that, right? You take that word no, 
and you move with it. That's the point of the video. That's the message I want to get across. Is you take that adversity, you bottle up, and you transform it into positive energy. Positive energy. Okay, if you take it, turn into negative, go hit the bottle, start turning to bad things as a coping method, or just sitting on the couch, laying back on that is not going to get you anywhere. And what you'll do when you can take that no, that diversity, and transform it into positivity, is people will start to look at you in a different light. People will start to look at you like, wow, this person is incredible. I can't believe I said no to them. Why did I say no to them? What was I thinking saying no to them? Because now they're in front of me. Now I'm trying to catch up to them. You. So each person that you impact with your behavior will be one further alliance that you have in the future. And as you start, you're young, you know nobody, you have no credibility. All you have is your face and your digits. Go make something happen. And each person you impact is another person in your corner. And trust me, those people will say no to you, but the chances are less and less with the more that you show them. The more work ethic, the more strength, the more motivation will change the way they look at you. And they're going to love you. They're going to want more of you. They're going to tell their friends, business partners, and others about you. And that's how you start to build that energy. That's how you build that network. And ultimately, that's how you get to where you want to go. It's not easy. It's very hard. Again, with this church, trying to prove and justify to these suit and tie people that have virtually no experience in the trenches, right? The trenches, like you just saw, tenant walking in, wanting their deposit, disputes, maintenance, stabbing, as you saw in the email a couple weeks ago. They don't have the experience in the trenches. All they can do is shuffle around some papers, put on their suit and tie, and tell me no. Tell you no. They don't get it. So it's not their fault, right? It's not their fault that they don't know. But it's my job and it's your job to show them and teach them why the answer should be yes. Yes. Tell them, show them, teach them, prove to them. And once this project is done, this church I go back to, it's such a perfect example. Once it's done, that layer, that orbit, all of those people, all of those fancy, schmancy, will look at it and say, wow, hmm, millions and millions of dollars. That could have been coming to my bank. That could have been coming to my company. But instead, it's going to this company. Man, why did I doubt that guy? Hmm. Oh, he, did, he didn't treat me negatively. He didn't mother F me up and down. That's another point. You never want to get emotional when things don't go your way, right? You want to show them your confidence and strength in times of vulnerability and weakness. Because that's when you really get to see somebody's character. You see their character when they're given a situation that's not comfortable and not one they like time and time again it's easy to be happy when you're getting your way and treat everybody nice fair weather friend they call it right but how does somebody act how do you act when you don't get your way so all these people telling me no again i say no problem any questions any feedback you better have some feedback on this video this was a long one um, but just really want to get that out there. When people, uh, they don't take me serious, it really motivates me. I, it is fuel. It is absolute high-octane fuel. Because I know my capacity. I know my worth. I know my value. And so should you. And bottle that up. Bottle it up. And go to the moon. Once again, Greg Rice here in the bucket. Proving you're right. Proving you're wrong. Your property managed.